see anything out there right now, though it's a little bit foggy. Uh, we've been talking about the six-ton NASA satellite, 35 feet long, 15 feet around. That's getting ready to fall out of the sky. Debris from it could land on Earth as early as tomorrow. Here to tell us what to expect is Derek Pitts, chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute. Mr. Pitts, good morning. Good to good see morning. you. Good morning. I hope you don't mind that we have you sitting under the skylight, but we figure you're the professional. Uh, <laughs> so you'll know when to move? Our chances are good. Don't worry. <laughs> on a serious note, do we have, uh, I guess, a better sense of where the satellite may actually come crashing to Earth yet? No, we it's don't. Close. We don't have a better sense. We won't have a, a really good sense until we get to within about six hours, maybe four hours of re-entry. And so uh, the reason why is the path is very long. It depends a lot on the Earth's atmosphere and how that's going to affect it. So uh, we still have to wait to find out. So we're waiting to find out. We do know it won't hit an Antarctica. That's the one place yes, that's that is right. sort of safe. How, yes. how concerned, realistically, do we need to be here? Because you hear the odds, a 1 in 3,200 chance of it hitting someone mm. versus, say, a 1 in a million chance of being hit by lightning. Yeah, sure. But, you know, the way I really think about this, and I encourage people to think about it, is that the Earth is covered with water. 75% of the Earth is covered with water. So that means that the likelihood is that it's probably going to fall in an ocean someplace. And then, if it should come down over land, most of the land area of the Earth is pretty much empty. People tend to live along the coasts. So that also reduces the uh, possible exposure for people getting struck by something. Okay, that sounds good in theory, but right. let's just say let's worst just say, case scenario. Sure. What happens six hours from before this is about to re-enter and we do find out this is going to hit a populated area? What type of contingency plan is in place? What do you do? So the first thing to think about is that most of this will completely disintegrate on re-entry. There are some pieces, about 26 pieces, that could possibly make it all the way to the surface. And the thing that we uh, have to be aware of is once the call is made that this could come down over a populated area, if people stay indoors, that would be a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that would minimize the kind of damage yeah. or impact on people. But again, the chances are so slim that that yeah. would happen. But there's going to be more and more stuff. I mean, I mean, things sort of come down all the time. There are a number yes. of satellites up there. Is there any way to control, I guess, two-parter here? Mm -hmm. um, when and where they come down as technology improves. Is there anything you can do when you launch something? Yeah, in fact, what actually happens with most satellites is that a little bit of fuel is saved uh, until very, very late in the mission to direct where the object is going to fall into the Earth's atmosphere. In this case, almost all the fuel was exhausted earlier on in its life history. And the other problem is that solar activity also plays a role in helping to determine when it's going to fall into the Earth's atmosphere. So solar activity heats the atmosphere, it expands, catches the satellite, brings it down. All right. We'll be watching. Thank you very much. We're going much. to stay wherever you are. Thanks okay, for coming great. in. My pleasure. <laughs>